It's the Oath on 106.3 The Buzz. I'm Johnny Thrash. My guest tonight is Henry Sattler at God to Throne. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Hey, man. Cool to talk to you, man. And the new album, Under the Sign of the Iron Cross, is out now on Metal Blade Records. I highly recommend it. First of all, I love the album. Oh, that's good to hear. Most of the responses are pretty good so far, so that's really good. Yeah, it's actually the second concept album about World War I following 2009's critically acclaimed Passchendaele. What made you decide to write about World War I? Uh, well, actually, I ran into it by accident. Uh, one of our former guitar players, uh, Isaac De La Haye, he lives in a town in Belgium called Iper, and they were on the front line in, in, during World War I, you know, in that town. And so this whole town is full of, like, war memorial signs, war cemeteries, and stuff like that. And it was really impressive. So, you know, I started digging in, into its history more, and... That impressed me even more. So then I decided to write a concept album about it. And then when I found out that people like it so much, I decided to do another one. You know, and to me, Passchendaele and Under the Sign of the Iron Cross are your most brutal and focused albums of your career. Would you agree with that? I guess so. I mean, I guess I'm not the right person to ask a question like that. I mean, I'm not objective anymore at all. I mean, I've been... I've been on top of the whole process from beginning to end, you know, so it would be a question that I should ask you. <laughs> right. You know, you, you know what I mean? But, uh, no, I'm really satisfied about the albums. I don't know. It seemed like having, um, having a certain topic to write about and, and focus the music towards that topic, for some kind of reason it gave me, it gave me more uh, inspiration to write songs. You know, when you think this is, these are our best albums, then I take that as a big compliment. The, the new album has all the brutality of, say, bloody blasphemy. Now, a lot of bands, they, they tend to mellow out when they get a little older. Ten years later, you know, where do you find the inspiration to write such aggressive music? Maybe I'm turning into an angry young man. I don't know. <laughs> Me and you both. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I, I just felt like, like writing music as, a, as aggressive as it is. Um, you know, it fits to the concept. You know, I, I read a book called Storm of Steel. Um, it's, it's a diary written by a guy who fought in the trenches of World War I. And when you read the book, you, there's no other way than to write very brutal and aggressive music. And if you, if you would count the amount of times that a guy nearly got killed but survived, it's, it's almost unbelievable. And that created a certain atmosphere that I wanted to reproduce in the music. So I guess that's, that, that explains a lot why the music turned out to be this brutal. Yeah, it, it, it gives, to me, it gives you that uh, impression of war with all the blasting that's going on and it's just really up front in your, in your face. It's kind of like a barrage, an onslaught, and it fits the album so well and what you've got going concept-wise. And speaking of Storm of Steel, that's probably my favorite track on the album. I don't know, i still got a long ways to go before I can call exactly which one's my favorite, but I dig the hell out of that tune, man. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, it's not... There's a reason it's, one of, it's the opening track on the album, you know? I mean, it's, it's also because the band thinks it's one of the best songs, and we're going to open with that song during, a live, during the live shows that are coming up. And that's going to be really tough, because the song is so fast and so, you know, intense to play that, you know, we'll have a lot of warm, warming up to do in, in, the, in the backstage room before we go on stage, because... That song and, and, the, and the second one, Firestorm, will be the first two songs we're going to play every show from now on. So that's going to be really intense. Well, it looks like you got a couple shows coming up in the Netherlands, speaking of which. And are you planning on coming to the States anytime soon? Yeah, of course. We would like to tour the States anytime. I mean, we love the country. We've been there before. And uh, it's, it's great to play the States. But, you know, we need a good, a good offer to, to be able to come over. It should make sense. Um, so nothing is planned yet, but as soon as that changes, you will definitely hear about it. That's good to know. You've had to deal with a lot of lineup changes over the years, and with members leaving for whatever reason, and, and that's not uncommon in the world of metal. Now, I understand everyone in the current lineups on the new album. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but I would like to add that the, the lineup changes that people always talk about when it comes down to God Throne, it's not that bad as people think, because let me tell you, usually people stay in a band for a period of like four to six years and play on two, three, or four albums. <clears throat> so that's not so bad. I mean, of course, there's bands like 
like both road we have the same lineup since since the day they started but i think those bands are more exceptions we we have toured so much the last you know 12 13 years that it's very hard to combine with a private life it's hard to combine with a job and stuff like that so people just can't keep up all the time you know I mean, you can't can't fault anyone. I know, you know, the metal lifestyle is not for everyone, and they figured that out, you know, a little ways in. So, and no one, no one's fault there. You know, the, the new album, as you said earlier, is getting some great reviews. How much did the new guys contribute to the album? Nothing. It was all you. <laughs> it's all me, but that's 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 usually the case when it comes down to God dethroned. Yes. Um, I'm the founder of the band. And I'm the only original band member left, and that was already the case, I think, in 93 or 94. But, you know, since, since then, I just kept on doing all the stuff for the band, not only writing the music, but doing everything else as well. But I'm always open for ideas from the other guys. But, you know, when I start, start writing songs, it only takes me a few weeks to come up with, like, four songs that are really strong. And then when the other guys come up with their ideas, they have to fit because if they, don't, if they don't fit, it doesn't make sense. And on this album, you know, Danny, the new guitar player, came up with some stuff, and so did Hank, the bass player. And it, it was just too different. So I had to disappoint them and say, sorry, guys, this is not going to end up on the new album. But, you know, they understand and they accept it, so that's good. Yeah. Well, last but not least, not least i got to know, what's your favorite God to Throne album? Do you have one? Uh, well, I guess it, it varies from time to time. I mean, every time I finish an album, I'm really proud of it. I listen to it quite a lot at home. Then at a certain point, I can't hear it anymore. I just want to play the songs live. You know, and then, you know, some albums you play a couple of, a couple of years later, you play them again, you're like, wow, this is a cool album. But that's actually the case for all the albums. There's not one album that I think it's a bad one, you know, so... For a, for a certain period of time, I can think Bloody Bless Me is our best album, but like a year later, I can think Into the Lungs of Hell is our best album. So I don't know. I like them all. Once again, my guest tonight, Henry Sattler of God to Throne. The new album, Under the Sign of the Iron Cross, is in stores now. Henry, thanks for coming on the show, man. All right, man. Thanks for the interview.